I wouldn't call it a Facebook revolution. I think that Facebook helped it happen. It may have happened more quickly because of Facebook, but everyone in Egypt was unhappy with the ruling regime, at least everybody that we encountered on our trips there. Of course, Hosni Mubarak himself had his supporters, but there was most certainly a critical mass. And I saw it in our trips to Egypt before, uh, before January 25th. We saw people, young and old, male and female, who were very upset about the status quo. And Facebook certainly accelerates the connections and we could watch in real time how it helped everybody figure out what everybody else was thinking. At least that's what it felt like to them when they logged on and they saw all of this anger. And then the big critical moment where someone creates a page and someone picks a day and someone makes a Twitter handle out of that day. This may be the first time ever in history where you have revolutions with a start date. Before we get to the to our last chapter. Um, Mahmoud, do you, I mean, it, it is quite easy to join a Facebook group and be for or against something. It is very easy to be uh, a member of We Are All Khalid Saeed. Um, it is not so easy to go to the streets and face, face the guns and the tear gas. True. And it's probably, or it's even, even harder to create a political party and have the endurance mm -hmm. of, act, of political activism. So what is, uh, what side, you chose your camp. Just tell us what you are doing. Are you? What am I doing right now? Are you going for, a, for, for political engagement? Oh, a long-term yeah. political engagement? Oh yeah, basically, um, <clears throat> what I'm trying to do in Egypt is, uh, let me put it here this way. The Egyptian revolution worked on a concept of volunteerism, which is basically whoever can do something, whoever sees their benefit at something, they go out and do it. The most important thing, I believe, in order for us to have a healthy political system is to have uh, a civil society that actually performs advocacy, which is the NGO aspect of it, uh, a political party that represents the people, which is you know, the political party of it, and then the, the, the journalistic project that we're working on right now, which is one, one part of it, old media, new magazine, and part of it is online, you know, so we can get everybody. And, you know, in order to maintain that the power structure more, more honest. And I think that's the path forward. If you want to rebuild, you know, our societies into ones that uh, hold freedom and accountability above all else, because God knows we don't have none of, that, none of that, you know, then we do need those tools in place. And But is it, is it difficult to, to differentiate between, between information activism? Well, he's a journalist and a poet, mm -hmm. but not a politician. I used to I, be. I think you have, <laughs> you have political ideas, but you have no political agenda. He's a scientist. Mm -hmm. He has political ideas, but he doesn't follow a political agenda. He doesn't want to throw over any government or whatever. Uh, you are somewhere... Um, where are you? Business educated, worked in finance, worked in business development, worked in social media, marketing. I mean, I've done everything. You know, I'm involved in a million projects, and I don't like to, to define myself the same way when we're talking about the party that we're creating we decided we were going to make it post-ideological. I don't want to, I don't want to have it called a leftist party it's or a right-wing party. It's an incredible term, post-ideological, but... but um well, that's what I'm saying. How, any, any, anybody who joins a camp uh, without addressing the issue, without seeing what the issue offers on both sides, is an idiot. But isn't it, isn't it the interesting point how political figures get created? And here come the social media, and they create players in the political arena. But um, here suddenly the, the, the internet activist scene comes up and, and, and Facebook kind of with the support of, of, of hundreds of thousands of people suddenly creates political figures like uh, um, what's his name Wael Ronim mm. in, in Egypt for example. Bigger, yeah. Well he became one. He became a politician. Yeah, what do you think about that? Uh, I don't know. I, I hold no opinion. I just, uh, I just hope he's ready for it. You know a lot of people want to, you know, I think what we need to focus more on is the institution, the process. Mm. Fe work the process, create the process. Ensure, for example, that the process that you have, you know, will allow people to democratically act a, pre a president in s or like, or for example, like there is a debate, who should we have as our next president? And people are throwing names, Amr Musa, uh, Ahmed Zoyal, whatever. No, how about we pick the guy who has the best program? I don't care about like his star power. If the guy has good ideas and I will believe in him, we will make him famous. That uh, means you know? that then you are moving from being politicized into politicians. There you go. That's when you when you think this way, it means that you are also changing changing not only the regimes. We have to change the culture. I mean, mm. I wrote an article once, and I said uh, any 
uh, society consists of uh, individual uh, dictators, of course, we'll have dictatorship mm -hmm. to, to be in the regime. But we have to change inside ourselves first. Well, to be democratic, to accept your opinion, to respect your opinion, you respect my opinion. Unfortunately, what it goes in the Arab world, if I don't like your opinion, I insult you personally. Why? You just argue with him. If you don't have the strong argument, then you shouldn't uh, use this kind of words. Well, let's say this is how it goes in the Arab world, unfortunately. Because I love Arabs, I have to criticize Arabs. When you criticize, it means that you love. That's why, if otherwise, I ignore. Go to hell, everybody, then. <laughs> no, but see, uh, that's, that's what I do. All right, like, uh, when I first started the blog, uh, I would say something, people would be like, uh, well, you can't be a Muslim and saying this, you must be Christian. Or you can't be really an <laughs> Egyptian, you must be American. Or you must be, like, uh, a Jew or whatever. So I, I wrote on my blog, a uh, member of the American imperialist, uh, Coptic, Zionist, Israeli, Christian, mm -hmm. Masonic conspiracy. Monkey. Yani, end of story. Yani, uh, khalas. If you have, if, uh, I'm all of this. I'm all of this. Are you done? Are you out of insults? Can you debate the idea now? You can't, خلاص, it's over, to believe. And, and, that's, and that's, that's where we need to go with it. I mean, I used to get death threats every week, and after, like, and then suddenly, like, I stopped getting them, and I felt insulted. I was just like, what happened? <laughs> 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 I don't offend you anymore? What do I need to do? Who do I need to insult now? Come on, quickly, tell me now, please.